Season 2, Episode 18. Uh, we're starting a bit, bit late for this one. Apologies for that. We have one of our guests um, do a who's doing a race for the Red Tournament. So uh, uh, glad for, thank you for sticking around. And also we're a week late because a couple of our hosts were ill last week. So um, good to see everybody uh, back. Uh, my name is Iron. I'll be one of your hosts for uh, for this uh, podcast. And with me are my fellow co-hosts, Etiquette. Hello. Jordan97. Hello. And Tucker. Hello, everyone. All right, and we got two really awesome guests uh, today. We got we have um, Ekman Larson, who uh, did uh, one of one of our uh, notable uh, records in the 3DS games. Hello, Ekman. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. And we also have uh, Spider, who's joining us. To, uh, we're going to be discussing some pretty uh, awesome uh, developments in the Sword and Shield DLC uh, runs. Um, there were some really crazy routing that's been been going on the last few weeks, so we're really excited to talk about that uh, today. Welcome, Spider. Steve, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. All right, I guess we'll uh, we'll get started. We we'll get to start talking about the the noted runs for the last five weeks or so. Um, first up, we have in the Gen One, uh, we have Poke Guy uh, doing red any percent glitchless, but the classic version. Um, we do know he's been grinding the. Uh, the standard glitchless run as well, uh, but this is a very solid second place time, uh, 157.25. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know the glit, the classic category has no RNG manipulations, it has no Poké Doll skips, you have to do the uh, Rocket Hideout in Celadon, and you also can't get instant text. There might be another item or two that I'm missing uh, on that list, uh, but this is a, a category that's based off of the, the Japanese. Uh, glitchless uh, rule set. I'm not too familiar with this run, but it's a very solid time. I think it's only slightly off of record, which is, I think, a low 157, or maybe it's 156, I don't recall, uh, I by Exarian. I love checking them out. But, um, yeah, it seems like um, most of his time loss was in Mount Moon. Again, we can't do RNG manipulations, so you can't do encounterless. So you have to uh, deal with all the encounters, which is the bane of everyone's uh, Gen 1 experience, especially as, as, as a child, and before we even allowed RNG manipulations a few years ago. So uh, definitely uh, definitely a, probably a heavy reset point in this run, for sure. Um, uh, so yeah, it's... Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I don't know too much about this run either. It did seem like this was Oak Guy's first finish run. I don't know if he's if it's just new splits or whatnot, but uh, yeah. So for Xarian time, it's uh, 156 29. So this is just under a minute off. But a minute, yeah. Um, yeah. Poker, poker guy, very good at red. <laughs> yeah, I I do think that he's still playing classic, so I wouldn't put it past him to get record maybe kind of soon. Xarian's current record is, in fact, the oldest record for main series Pokemon. Is it the red one that's the oldest? I know because it's red and yellow, I think, are the two oldest. I think he did red first, though. Was it yeah, red I think first? Red, red Classic is the first one. Alright. Yeah, they're, they're close. You probably did them very close to each other. Yeah, I think the next oldest one is, like, probably a Gen 2 Classic. Uh. The, again, I can have a look. You just give me yeah, a it's uh, a yeah, it's like Gen, I... Gen 2 Crystal Manipolis is the oldest that's not Gen 1 Classic. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting there. You got an encounter on the uh, the tile braid on the trainer trainer season. <laughs> um, yeah, no, this is uh, this is an interesting category for sure. Uh, definitely sub 2 is a really good time in this and again, 157 is extremely good. Uh, for this category. Yeah. So, uh, and like then I guess his... in terms of... Yeah. This was um, his first, like, completed run, but, like, he's had some runs before this run that were, like, on pace, but they didn't finish. So he just uh... went straight into record attempts. I think I saw him die on champ two or three times. Sure, on yeah. someone good pace. So, that sucks. Uh, the Nidoran looks okay, I guess. Um, 
good uh, good speed. Uh, the attack's kind of average. Everything else is pretty good. Um, for this, you definitely don't want to run low attack. I, I, I ran this a long time ago. It's very, very um, vague to me. But uh, you definitely want to have good stats. And obviously you can't manip, so you kind of have to take what you get and hope that it's good enough. Is there like a, a minimum attack, or is it actually is it routed for everything and then they, but there is obviously a lot have, better? They, they might have routed it. For, I'm not familiar, but they might have routed it for all. But definitely, there's certain attack. There's certain attack threshold that you really can't get a good time with. Um, yeah. But I don't. Attack but and I'm not speed, sure. I believe. That are yeah, those kind of deal breakers. Head Bob in the chat saying five or better DV. That makes that sounds about right. Okay. That's yeah. If I if I remember right, well, I never ran classic, but I used to run this back before the nips. You could have uh, 14, 15, or 16 attack at level 8, which was after Brock, and you would reset 14s. Um, and similar thing for speed. Your speed would be 13, 14, or 15, and you could res you'd usually reset 13. Um, special didn't matter as much. No. For resetting. Special matters like later in the run, but not for, for resets, typically. Although, this is also speaking like six years ago, so <laughs> things probably have changed. Interesting. Yeah, it's good to see the Manipolis kind of start to get a little more traction. There's obviously in the later gens, you can't do Manips. So a lot of us are doing later gen runs. Um, don't can't don't have to worry about. Well, they do. We do have to worry about stats, but we can't really control what we get. But it's good to see in the earlier gens have uh, the, these uh, these Manipolis runs. Pick up some uh, speed here. It's time to move on. Okay, how much do you know about this run? Um, I know a little bit. I I kind of watched it while verifying it, but yeah, um, this is Dexy's Black Any Percent JPN World Record. Uh, it's three fifteen twenty seven. Um, I guess one of the reasons why he came back to Black is because he had a couple of improvements to the route. Nothing too major. It's just like fixing up um. A menu here and there like a different rare candy spot in early game but um yeah i mean it was also one of his oldest records that he wanted to improve on and he definitely did that um one of the biggest blemishes on this run is that he got the unlucky light screen on n which loses I think, like 10 or so seconds and he also got flame body from chantal chandelier um, it's just stuff that, you know, you kind of have to deal with when playing black, uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, it's a solid run that, that he, he worked hard on, so, there you go. It's like, I, I was trying to, like, find something for this. I, the only thing I could notice was that, like, I think after this point, in pretty much every single split, except for maybe one or two, it's just, like, time save on each of the splits. But then also, I just saw, like, the comment, congrats on light screen. Mm -hmm. And that just meant nothing to me. Okay. And it was like just the, like in the notes. That I guess did I? Did you change them? Took it or did someone change them? I yeah. changed them a little bit. I right. have more details. But yeah, like light screen is bad because on the end fight you um you have to catch Reshiram and you have to use that against Zekrom. And when Zekrom uses light screen, it loses time because you hit Reshiram into heal range and then it heals. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah, so just kind of up to the AI. The whole game is like trying not to lose so many turns to detect and fake out and protect and <laughs> all that. And light screen is just one that comes at the end. Yeah, you got that one. But yeah, as you as you highlighted on this, uh, he didn't get static on Elisa, which is really good. Uh, most of the runs that are at the top end of black have just like really solid luck throughout and don't lose times in you know places where you can lose massive amounts of time i.e lenora berg or elisa so yeah that's good i, I had a question about um I, i've seen here and there i maybe it's on like twitter or whatever that 
I'm not sure if it's Dexy or if there's another Japanese runner who's looking at Sock. I know this is something that's been kicking around for a while. Oh, yeah. Um, how's Dexy. how's that looking now compared to uh, to um, Lillipop? So Sock is Sock is an alt main where you have to like you have to do a save and quit in order to get Sock, but Sock actually like performs better than Lillipop after you catch it. It's still slower. But it, like it's a very good old means. It's, it's the second best route to beat uh, Black in, oh, okay. and um, or White actually, because it's a White exclusive. But Dexy oh, was oh. doing sock runs after taking a small break from any percent runs, and then he came back and did the end percent run. So he also got a PB in sock, which is nice. How much difference in time are we talking here in terms of? Um, I think it's like two minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's maybe that's two more, more than two minutes. Yeah. yeah. I I think it's it shouldn't be that big, but like nobody's gonna grind sock because it's not it's not the best route to use. Like people have grinded a little up more, so that's just yeah. Like, unless they find that it is, it can be faster than yeah. It seems like it's, it's not at this point. Yeah, it's definitively not faster. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on. Yep, 3DS runs next. All right. Yeah, so um, next up is one of two uh, 3DS records from Headbob. Um, this is Headbob's uh, 339 uh, in XY any percent. Uh, first sub 340 for the game. Um, and yeah, th this run had a, an extremely good start. Um, good luck overall. And um, did have a death here in Frost Cavern, um, and then ended up playing, you know, pretty safe and had a mediocre sort of end game um, to to sort of clutch out the the three thirty nine. But yeah, this is a this is an amazing time. I know a, a few runners were were going for the you know low three forties into the three thirties, so um, it was really cool to see. I don't know Ekman if you know more about this particular run. Uh, I just know that like early game was insane i think it's okay. one of the best maybe the best to the catch time which is always a big deal for yeah that's X. Oh, yeah. i do know a little bit more about like what actually made this run like so good like um it's it's an absolute bombshell of a time like it, it was on 337 or 338 pace that bob likes to remind us of that because <laughs> <It, 'cause laughs> got to the depth that sort of pushed it back to 339 but um yeah, it, it had some incredible luck because, like, in, what, the rock section up to Glittering Cave, he got, like, the minimum amount of encounters, which is, like, two. Um, he got, I, I believe, first encounter, first ball, Belucha, and it was really good stats. It was, um, Adam, uh, yeah, Adamant. Um, Boy, that's so then, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, and then he got, like, a couple of incredible crits that... Just like they're they're really really just insane. He also like skipped teaching flying press because it his attack was so good. This is um this is a strat that Ekman thought of. Um and he went for like a crit on or, or rather he didn't sword dance on the sim stage that uh that is like a two hit anyway, and he got the crit there, which saved more time. Like it's just this one was just looking so impossibly good um, until the death happened. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was also the best Corinna split ever. Like right after getting one of the best Lucha times, he also got the best Corinna split. And yeah, it's just everything at the Ramos seems like, like it will not, never be beaten to me, honestly, unless we find something major. Oh, wow. But like it's Ramos, uh, everything at Ramos is like, I will, I can't imagine a better run, to be honest. Yeah, he also had a death to Anastar rival. Um, so this whole Olympia split was like the worst part of his run by far. I, it lost him like maybe two minutes. Um, 
it's it was, still it was... kind of incredible that this time was like just that good even with this happening uh, I, I assume cause the three ds competition is still going on right yeah. yeah it goes on until scarlet violet i think okay so and well i mean i can see i'd love it a bit yeah i, I can see because obviously the next one's also from head bob with the world record i assume head bob's currently leading right now or is it's actually yeah it, it's a massive Must lead be. is it a massive yeah. lead don't yeah. aim for that he's got the best times in three or four games he's but only behind truly and oras uh four yeah. out of five games if you count oras as separate because because head bob's got the omega ruby record but not the alpha sapphire record Ah, uh, yeah, for the purposes of the, yeah, of yeah. the competition. Right. Where it's counting to four. Which is just ridiculous game it's... coverage. <laughs> yeah, like, it involves that close to the sweep. Yeah. Is he, like, the, just if he were to get Alpha Sapphire record, it would be the sweep. I, I know he hates that, but I think he lost it on <laughs> Champ, his Alpha Sapphire run. So oh. he almost got it, yeah. Exactly. Oh, damn. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So moving on to the next record, uh, this is Head Bob's Moon um, 451.15 uh, on new 3DS. Um, Gen 7 is split between new and old 3DS. That's going to come in, come into play a little bit later. Um, could have been over a minute ahead here um, coming out of, or, you know, at the, the school split, you can see sort of at the top of the splits. Um, and then even further ahead at Alima. But um, yeah, some some pretty bad, you know, bad luck during these splits. What happened during these splits? Why are we 20 minutes ahead? <laughs> I think it's, it's, just, it's just accidentally put the timer. In, so it's like... It's this is not the hollow split. This is the Illumi split, like a few. Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that makes that makes way more sense. I was like, I was looking at Poplio's yeah. like level so. and stuff, and I'm like, it makes sense for it to be a Lima, and like, I don't know Olalo very well, oh, so go. I didn't know who the characters <laughs> were. But <laughs> yeah. all right, anyway, he gets corrected. <laughs> um, so yeah, could have been could have been a lot better early game. Um, you know, but ended up playing you know playing much better um through the mid and late game, and um. Yeah, I think this is, you know, this is a really solid time overall. Yeah, I think the term head Bob used was it's the time that he's content with. Because I yeah. mean, it's 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 a solid time, and but it's also it's a it's a long run. Yeah. Moon gave head Bob a lot of uh, a lot of trouble. He definitely seemed like he wanted to get this over with, and he did that. I don't blame him for moving on, <laughs> even with a, a time he might not feel too great about. I would not blame anyone for wanting to move on. Especially from Pokemon Moon. You're speaking of Pokemon Moon, still. <laughs> um, yeah, I will, uh, Eggman, you can take this one away. Uh, sure. Uh, so, yeah, got a good run there. Like, basically, I'm very happy with what happened. I got very insane school split like i think i saved 20 seconds on my gold on school split which is early game so that was insane uh, then everything just went pretty standard what you can say i think it's just we i used a different route than headbop actually um i think headbop came up with it that we use high xp so it's a little bit more safer uh in the early game and you win or you do one and kill the Celestial in the mid game and then you have to kill the Raichu later on to make up for the XP because of the scaled XP uh, that we have in Gen 7 or in Moon and but you can go for an, uh, another another version where you can eat less and then you have a range on Celestial to kill and I went for the range here and got it which saved a lot of time in the end and yeah it was really important in the end and but as you could see there, I just died to the E4 member because I got unlucky. You usually want fake out from Sableye. I, I used Confuse Ray and then crit 
three times in a row with Shadow Claw. <laughs> Just oh, no. very unlucky. <laughs> um, yeah. That's... Shadow Claws increase crit rate, right? Yeah, I yeah. think it's one in eight. Yeah, yeah that's, that's still very unlucky. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was like I was over a minute ahead going into E4. I had a very bad Dunala as well, so I couldn't do any of the like fast threats either, so I had to do no standard threats, which were totally fine. Um, but yeah, then I died, was still slightly ahead, and then on champ we also have like two versions of how we can uh, fight it. Uh, it can use Mirror Code, or it can use uh, Thunderbolt, the Magnus on, on champ. And I think Wartap got Mirror Code, which is a lot faster, because then you can just use Primarina and sweep. And so he had to get that as well <laughs> for it to get record, and I got it. I thought I was through, and then the Snorlax used Body Slam and paradise me. I've never seen that. I didn't even know it wow. had Body Slam. Oh no! And yeah, in the end, it was very very close, but it was barely enough. Almost everything happened in order to take record away from you, but you got the mirror code. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, it's bittersweet with the death at the end. It cannot really be happy if you die in the last 10 minutes of the run. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, still happy that I got it. And yeah, it's cool that we both, uh, Headbob and I, got the records, like, on the same night. I went to sleep, wake yeah. up, and saw he beat it as well. <laughs> I watched oh. so much Pokemon Moon that day, and I'm happy that I don't have to watch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Are you are you gonna push it further, Ekman? Or are you not bothering? No, no, I'm not pushing further. Like, <laughs> uh, the run. I mean, the run would have almost been. I would have been so happy without the death. Now it's like, yeah, okay. Yes, I have to live with it. <laughs> I no, I don't want to push further. At least right now. Why why are you uh, running at the moment? Um, I'm. I was running red, like I was yeah. an attorney, so I was playing that, and I. Started running Ultra Moon, but I didn't have too much fun with it. But I still have to finish a run that's decent because for the competition to have just the time so that I can get a placement there. No prospects for the old 3DS Gen 7 sweep? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> not really. I mean, it, it might happen, but the old 3DS record from what is very good, and I think I would have to play a lot to beat that. And I don't feel like doing that right now. <laughs> understandable. Yeah, very understandable indeed that. Yeah. And moving on to the switch section now because there's a there's a fair amount of it. There's, there's been a fair amount of switch stuff for a while though to be fair. Yeah, switch has been super active. Mm -hmm. Um uh, but yeah, so first switch record, uh this is Echi getting uh two fifty nine in Let's go Pikachu, um, any percent, no mount skips. So this is the first sub three without mount skips. Um, moves the EV record to be over a minute ahead now of the... Or the Pika record over a minute ahead of the EV record. Um, don't, don't try to rewrite history here. No, no, I... <laughs> I knew what EV I was saying. <laughs> um, I think it's the first time in a really long time that the records are over a minute apart. Um... Because they, you know, for a while they were about like about a minute, and then the EV time went down to be like one second away from the peak of time, and now this is you know over a minute faster than that. So, um, yeah, this section had some really good fights. Um, catching sections overall went well, um, but some of the the more you know crucial sections, things like Route Six that we're seeing here, uh, Route Ten right before, um. Rock Tunnel, uh, we're a little bit on the unlucky side with a couple breakouts. So um, this run's certainly improvable, but I think um, from what I've seen, I think Echi is is content with this one uh, for now. Uh, uh, what's this? There's something a comment. Oh, I can uh, Okay, yeah, his next goal is two fifty five in any percent. Yeah, which oh. is also mad, but. If anyone is going to be able to do it, or at least one of the people that's going to be able to do it, it would be Edgy. 
the but yeah it's it's really cool to see this because I, I don't know about other people but for me it was like you know once mount skips became consistent it was like all right sub three is just a matter of time where we always like knew without mount skips you could get sub three it was still sort of felt a little bit out of reach um and so you know seeing it actually happen without mount skips is uh is really really wild and really cool yeah i guess a lot of that has to do with the date all the data mining and all yeah. the information that we got about the game catching mechanics and stuff too which helped yeah a lot of it, it the way i like to describe it whenever somebody asks me is it was not a lot of like actual route changes but a lot more informed decisions about like you know catching things taking certain risks all that kind of stuff um just allows us to play faster even if we're doing effectively the same as we were doing before so um but yeah congrats to etchy on that one um next up this is uh the first of two runs uh, from kick and run keith uh this is the let's go pikachu any percent uh second place time um so this is the mount skips category if you want to call it that um, and we can see here the actual only the only mount skip um, that Keith messed up during the run. Um, overall, this was a pretty good run uh, through SSN. Um, had a bit of a bad time uh, with Growlithe and Rhyhorn. Um, and also uh, didn't get a Nidoran mail on Route 10. Um, you can see by the catcher out there. So lost a, a few turns through like the hideout tower sections. Um, but yeah, overall, overall solid time. This is second place. It's a few minutes behind uh, the current record. Um, I think this is the one of the only runs on the board for any percent. Uh, Try to remember which one. One of them had like one time and one of them has like six. Th this is second out of two. Second out of two. Okay. Yeah, so EV's got um, five. Okay. Yeah, and so uh th this will certainly be improved by Keith, I think. Um uh, assuming they, you know, are interested in in pushing it further. Um Kick and Run Keith is a, you know, a runner who came onto the scene fairly recently. Um and has gotten better at Let's Go in a very very short time frame. Uh which is really cool to see. Uh, them still pushing it even further. Um, and yeah, so this is the the other run. Uh, this was actually like yesterday. Uh, yeah, looking at the date, this was yesterday. Um, this is the Let's Go EV No Mount Skips second place time. Uh, so they, they had taken second place um, a few weeks ago. Um, and this is just a, a slightly better time. This is a 301.57. Um, Quiet Nature on Eevee, which normally we don't run minus speed Eevees, but um, with plus special attack, you can kind of make it work. Um, and then you can see here, uh, Keith is doing some of the more traditional Pikachu strats uh, using Nidoking here in Hideout as opposed to the Eevee. Uh, normally Eevee can kind of take, uh, you know, take care of Hideout and, and whatnot uh, on its own. Um, it doesn't benefit as much as Pikachu does from second controller stuff, but um, we can see here that sort of adopting some of those Pika strategies and it, it worked out for him. So. Um, so, yeah, this is I think the record in Eevee right now is a 30105. Um, and correct. so this is yeah, so this is now within a minute of that. Um, so it'll be exciting to see where, where this goes after that. And then this is me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, second place at 407.46. Gosh, you're the worst bit, obviously. Uh, Messing oh, with the no. trainer skip. Yeah, I I had doubt. I doubt. I think it's tricky. It's like I normally I I normally get that, <laughs> but I I just had a bit of doubt. Well, yeah. So. If you're experienced, yeah, you should get it most times. But if you're new, it's hard. Yeah, it, it's 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 there's a, there's a nicer easier way where you can like kind of tuck into the trainer and do like a, a bit of a spin, but either way, you, I didn't do that, and I ended up going to the trainer. But yeah, aside from that, uh, there's also um, a 
faint later on from Intellion in the Peer's Gym section, so like the seventh gym. Uh, I didn't know a, a Pokemon had Sucker Punch uh, until it used it on me. So that, that was fun to learn. Uh, there's also a small mistake in the Eternatus fight that cost me like three turns because I accidentally went down and, and did like an extra down input, basically. But it was up until this, uh, up until like the fail train skip, it was a very solid run. Um, it was probably, it was a 406 pace run. The target doesn't suggest that, but. Uh, the, the actual because the target times my pre 1.2 PB that was like, I had a fairly weak end game as well. So yeah, th this was it, this was set up to be like a very good run, and now I'm a I'm a bit annoyed about it, and I need to beat it. But it is what it is. Um, yeah, uh, at least for now though, it, it is a good run. It is a good run. I'm gonna. Move this over to etiquette because this is you now <laughs> but um, we're showing off all our own runs here apparently apparently yeah so uh this was um my shield any percent with turbo uh 407 32 so this is um faster than the non-turbo record as well um this run was um pretty good overall um obviously given that it's the record um the the arcanine i got was pretty average um in terms of stats i lost a bit of time over my previous pb i lost about like a minute um through the arcanine section um and then what we're seeing here is this was the uh drillber catch the drillber actually ko'd my arcanine before i got a chance to burn it so i kind of just had to throw balls and hope for the best um and it only took about four or five balls so it wasn't wasn't the most lucky thing in the world but at the same time uh you know, I did kind of get bailed out by some good luck by actually getting the catch. Um, and then, yeah, so the, the drill bar I got was actually really good. If you want to skip ahead, you can see the stats. It was a, um, yeah, naive nature. Uh, plus speed is really good for Excadrill. Uh, using Carbos, I outsped everything in the game, um, which really saved me actually on the Nessa 2 fight because I um, missed a rock slide which allowed the Pelipper to get a Tailwind off, and then I used the next speed um, when I got hit by the Water Pulse. If uh, if I was slower than the Barrascuter earlier in the fight, I would have taken damage and probably would have died to the Pelipper here um, after missing the Rock Slide. So uh, definitely got some luck there. Um, the other big place I lost a lot of time was in uh, the 8th Gym. Um, I missed a range on one of the double fights and then the second double fight i crit my own arcanine instead of uh allowing it to live so i had to spend time out of battle reviving but other than that this run was really really good um and it officially beat my 1.2 pb so or my pre 1.2 pb so i was really happy with it congrats on that nice still the etiquette showcase right now by the way <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so th this is a uh, second place Brilliant Diamond Glitchless. Um, this run had a really, really, really good start. Um, I had like a 45 Gardenia. Um, really nothing went wrong in the entire run until I hit a spinner in Lake Valor um, on the way to Saturn. Um, hit that spinner, lost about a minute there. Um, and then we're showcasing another minute lost on this fight. Um, this was the first time I had gotten to this point in the game since basically SGDQ. Um, so I I probably misplayed quite a bit um, going through this fight. But uh, yeah, lost quite a bit of time here. And then because I lost, I had to revive a couple of times uh, during this section. I didn't have any revives later on in the run. Um, where normally there's a backup strategy in Victory Road, um, where if you die, you can sort of finish the fight with the Legendary and then revive for the last fight. Um, and I had to do both fights with the Legendary, had to take the extra Pokemon Center and all that stuff. So I probably lost, between those three things, the spinner, this fight, and the end of Victory Road, probably about three to four minutes. Um, 
and so th this was this was certainly capable of beating the the first place time for shining pearl um in addition to being first place for brilliant diamond but uh just didn't quite quite pan out that way what is the current time for shining pearl um i have a 318 17 i think 318 13 something like that the low 318 okay a solid would have been i mean it's still a very solid run but yeah this was um I, I i compared my splits the byron split um was slightly faster in shining pearl but i did lose some time in the end game um so this was probably 317 pace until the spinner happened and then this happened and then victory road happened yeah. i think things it's like it always feels like when one thing happens a lot of other things start to happen at least yeah, exactly. But yeah, no, no more of the showcasing now. Now we're on to, <laughs> yeah, now no. we're showcasing shady because now we're showcasing no. the game I hate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, finishing off the the switch section, we've got two legends RCS runs um, by the same person. So this is shady shady gamer X's um, new record in English legends RCS any percent. Uh, this is a three forty one oh three. Um, it says, uh, it says here, solid run. It was about two minutes ahead after research, um, and then had a pretty below average end game. Um, lost, lost time to the lake fights. Uh, anyone who's done this run knows that the lake fights, uh, have ways to, to lose a lot of time because they're like ranges and things like that. Uh, so missed out on two of the three ranges. Um, in the end game, which uh, cost quite a bit of time. But in terms of the research section, um, we're showcasing here, had a really, really fast Cyndaquil. Um, it had a great first two areas. Um, and then lost a bit of time in Coastlands uh, and in Highlands getting the uh, the Haunter, which is part of the new, new strategies for the end game. Um, but yeah, overall, really, really good time from one of the best, you know, Legends runners that we have. And then this one, so fresh off the uh, the press, that this is actually just highlighted from his stream, because I don't believe that Jay's highlighted it yet. <laughs> yeah, um, this is... Yeah, so this was from, like, literally last night. Um, this is Shady getting the Japanese record uh, for any percent, with a 339.56, so uh, the first sub 340. Um, I know how was Calgary was going for um sub 340 quite a bit recently but it looks like shady got there um had an even worse end game apparently than the english record uh missed every range on the three lake section and then couldn't do the fast fight for benny because benny missed hypnosis um there's a the way the speed mechanics work whether a move hits and all that kind of stuff kind of you know influences the turn order so couldn't do the fastest strategy but um was able to able to squeeze out that uh 339 yeah only because it was like very like as well it was like very close to missing rage skip which would apparently have cost five seconds yeah rage skip on the the final fight would have cost about five seconds which would have made it not sub 340 um Basically, there's a mechanic for the the noble boss fights where um, you, when the, the Pokemon gets below half health, uh, the next sort of break in its cycle, it will do this roar. Um, it's, you know, we call it rage, uh, where it's basically immune until that finishes. And then usually the AI for the second half of the fight will be slightly different and so on the final fight it's actually really bad because there's two different things it can do after the halfway point um and one of them is super rng based and you can just get hit out of nowhere like there's no build up to getting hit um so it kind of sucks and there is a way that you can essentially not trigger the rage um during the final fight by just KOing it before it has a chance to um has a chance to sort of reset its AI. Um, and so the fact that Shady was able to get that was 
was really clutch. Um, essentially, the way that this fight works is you're going to be attacking here, and then during the next phase of the fight, uh, there's going to be these like waves that come out from the boss, and what you do is you damage boost off of the purple wave instead, because you don't get knocked down for those, but you do get knocked down for the blue wave. Um, and then this right here, the next thing Palkia does is rage, as you can see it sort of starts to do, but Shady was able to get the, the final hit in right before that happened. Yeah, and then it's all this to the credits now. The Japanese, yep. well, you can't sit through the credits for Japanese reasons. Yeah, English time is right at the end of that fight. Um, mm. But Japanese time, there's a cutscene to skip, all this mashing, and then credits. Yeah, congrats to Shady on the first 340. I don't know if they're planning to push further. You like either Shady or Hulk or any of the Japanese runners. I wouldn't be surprised if they find a new route change and have to push it further, because uh, that's basically how this game has been. Uh, those two have find something new, grind it down a couple minutes, find something new, grind it down a couple minutes. So we'll see where it goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but onto the games that Shady and Hulk have abandoned. Um, this is uh, Shigeru's Explosive Sky. Uh, Beat Darkrai No Wonder Mail Wii U Virtual Console Japanese World Record. Uh, this is a 750-31. Um, use a Shinx and Skitty combination. Uh, got Water Pulse at some point, and then raise Shinx to level 41 to learn Discharge. I assume that just uh, through like the like sections. Actually, it's level 41 at this point. It is. But like sections like this, which seem to have like assume a fair amount of water Pokemon and those. It. The second gen is oh the second like stage is print pop right the uh, pip up the pip up yeah. evolves yep. into print up yeah so like a lot of uh, ice and water Pokemon I, I've actually said that now I'm thinking is electric super effective on ice no no so that's actually irrelevant but discharge is just a powerful move I'm pretty sure uh, PMD's mm -hmm. stuff is different if I remember correctly as well. So I don't know if it's exactly the same, like, cause I think some have changed, some are different. But it's a good move. It's a good move that will get you through a good, like, a fair chunk of sections, I would imagine. Um, but that's not the only uh, Explosive Sky B Darkrai No Wonder Mill record because Eponymous has also done that on the English version, the DS slash 3DS. This is a nine twelve oh three which shows the difference in time between English and Japanese just language wise and also between Wii U Virtual Console and DS uh, just general speed wise um, but this uh, this time itself was okay it's a 25 minute improvement like over 25 minute improvement compared to Eponymous's previous PB which was world record at the time and use the Chikorita lead which and then Meowth is a secondary Pokemon. I believe Meowth's used for like frustration. I I have no idea why Chikorita is used, but it's used for a reason. Uh clearly. But yeah. It also uh doubles up as a 530-730 which I uh, for like the any percent run, which I do not have context for. I probably should have put that down. But Either way, a very good run uh, with a massive improvement compared to the previous uh, world record. Then the last side game though, this is Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Sapphire Complete Pokedex by Amoeba. This is a 550-25. Um, just to take like the quote from like the, the uh, description, I just fairly lucky overall. A couple of mess spots, uh, but nothing terrible. <laughs> Quite happy with how Amoeba in this case played as well. No glaring mistakes that he remembers. Uh, also, just there is a, a manip. Like this game has manips, which is wild to me. But uh, a manip so you can get Pichu because there's some very, very low chance, and like one or two percent maybe for the hatching from an egg. Though, 
But then ah. to Manip, that saves a good chunk of time, typically. Um, and I think there's also Manips for Latios and Latias, uh, which are... I don't know the exact odds for them and all that, but I do know you have to catch at least 100 Pokemon before you can get them. So, yeah, it takes, takes a lot of time. Oh, I'll almost say that there. But yeah, uh, one last note to run. It's a fan game, so I, I will let you talk about this. Yeah, so this is uh, Stocky uh, doing Renegade Platinum, which is a Platinum um, difficulty hack. Um, getting a pretty decent time with this, 209.32. Um, as you can see, there's tweaking, and I don't believe there was much of, if any, tweaking in the previous uh, route of this. I could be wrong. Um, so this took off quite a lot of time because he was able to skip um, quite a few fights, including Rourke and Byron. I don't exactly know too much about this run. I do know you use the in-game trade Chatot, uh, which is pretty beastly, uh, with Chatter and... Um, you end up at level 100 at the end of the run. I'm not sure exactly if that's due to like a lucky egg or if it's due to just doing a lot of fights. But this game does run on... There's a 60 FPS um, version of it. I think it might have been originally been on 60 FPS. I know there's runs for 30 as well. And uh, so the run's pretty fast. Obviously, uh, tweaking at 60 FPS is kind of challenging. So... Uh, I can imagine. Yes. But, but uh, <laughs> he, was able to, he was able to pull that off. Um, I believe um, it seems like sub two could be possible with this, but there's a little more work that needs to be done. Um, I think you mentioned you can maybe skip another major section, but experience wise, it might be something they have to do to kind of make up for that. But yeah, um, oh, it's also he has a level 40 tentacle right away. So that's something they <laughs> yeah, was, get really early in order to kind yeah, of stop just, through the early game it's just cool that you can uh do tweaks right away because you get the bike right away the bike yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's a good point as well <laughs> it's just like a, a lot of things to make like just quality of life choices for the, like a normal player and then as well just take in break everything oh wow buddy water hits both opponents i forgot about that I mean, don't you like? Oh, yeah, you run. Yeah, if you use Buddy Water. Oh yeah, that's that's a good that's a good segue to the next sort of topic. That is a great segue. Here, but... <laughs> there's no there's no double battles in these runs though. So, um, okay, so we're gonna kind of spend some time. We've invited Spider uh, to the podcast this week to talk about a major development in the um, DLC run, specifically Getter Shifu, Do Getter Shifu. Um, as you can see, this is a Getter Shifu, or this is, yeah, this is Getter Shifu. Uh, this is Poe uh Japanese record of 123. Uh, this, compared to the previous times, we're probably around 127, 126 even. So this new route takes off about three minutes. Um, and it involves going to the Crown Tundra, which is an area we don't normally go. So Spider, if you're, if you're there, do you want to kind of explain yeah. kind of how you kind of, because you kind of came up with this whole crazy idea. Do you want to kind of talk about um, kind of what led you to, into, into trying this out and, and uh, what sort of like major um, improvements or to the route this uh, this provides. Yeah, so that's, it's no exaggeration to say that this is all because Wulu evolves at level 24. Um, <laughs> I got really bored one time and decided to run Wulu alt main for Isle of Armor. And so then I started looking into candy stuff. Um, and... After a lot of candy research and some help from iron, a lot of help from iron as well, um, we found that it just improves all of the runs and not just the weird alt mains that I was doing. Um, so for this one in particular, uh, instead of, um, well, actually this one has two improvements. The first one was a few weeks ago where I would come, I started coming to the Crown Tundra to get medium candies to level up Cub Fu instead of doing uh, instead of fighting Blissies. Um, but then the more recent change as of like, last week, I think, um, is to go to the Count Crown Tundra, but then grab the medium candies for Sobble and use a large candy for your Cub Fu. Uh, and so then that way, um, 
you just don't need to do any XP grinding for either Pokemon, or you're never doing it for Sobble in the first place, but whatever. Um, and then you're also safer because you end up uh, on a higher level on your Cub Fu than you did on the old Blissey list way that I was doing. Uh, so it's you can run more Cub Fus as well. Yeah, yeah like... so the major another another thing you talked to Spider just mentioned is skipping Blissies, which are like two percent spawns in the Fields of Honor outside of the dojo. Um, most of the previous runs that we saw uh, of Getter Shifu, um, the runner steps out of the dojo and there's like three Blissies lined up ready to go. Uh, or, and I'm not exaggerating. That's a lot of the time. That's the case. Um, so a lot of the time you could be on a really good run and then just get destroyed by Blissey luck. Um, it's a two percent spawn. It's not super likely. Um, so this kind of takes away that element of the RNG. Um, but there's another sort of major improvement by getting your Sobble. You saw um, Poke here. He used two medium candies on his Sobble to hit level 21 right away. And normally you're level 12, level 13. At this point, you're kind of able to skip a couple major... Well, one major RNG section and then another section which saves a lot of time. Do you want to just talk briefly about those, Spider? Yeah, so... Um, having the extra levels on Sobble just makes the route so much safer because before, in order to get into the DLC zones, well, uh, before what we were doing to hit level 12, which is necessary in order to catch a slow poke, um, is we had to beat Onyx and the Onyx had pretty good chance of killing you because it took two shots to beat the Onyx, uh, and it knew, it knows Rock Slide, which will always one shot you and Dragon Breath, which is normally a two-shot, but sometimes will one-shot you. Um, so eliminating Onyx by getting the doing a different XP route to get to level 12 um, makes runs more consistent. And then the other spot where the extra levels on Sobble really helps is the Mustard 1 fight. Um, because before, uh, depending on your defense, you would have to use an X defend. Uh, and then if you get, use the X defend, uh, that gave more chance that Mustard's um, Mind Fu would use U-Turn, and U-Turn fights were just painful. Uh, a lot of the times there was no way to come back from them. Yeah. Um, so neither of those issues exist anymore with the new route. Yeah, so Spider mentioned X defending, so we actually don't even get X items anymore. Uh, so um, because we're up to level 21, you get three max mushrooms, which are effectively like Omni Boosts, um, like battle items, they boost all your stats by one stage each. Um, and you get three of them after beating either Avery or Clara, depending on the version you're running. And um, because you're so high level, you don't use a need, you don't need to use an X special attack on the first rival fight here. You don't need to use any X items on Mustard. Um, because you're such a high level Drizzile, you don't need any X items for the slow pokes. And the second fight against your rival it's a little bit trickier in shield because the Kadabra can still outspeed you or even speed tie you, and speed ties are always bad uh, to deal mm. with. Um, it's a little, it's much better in sword, much more consistent at least. Uh, you don't need X items for that either. You just two shot the slow poke, and then you one hit everything else. Uh, so it's I guess the Kadabra is technically a, um, uh, a a two shot as well. Interestingly, for shield, you can actually teach if you get your Sobble up to twenty one, it learns Sucker Punch. And so you can actually, if you have a good enough attack, you can teach Sucker Punch just for the Kadabra and not have to worry about it hitting you and confusing you. Um, but you need to have good attack. And obviously, the candies also you get in the in the Crown Tundra can also aren't exactly consistent as well. Do you want to kind of talk about that? Yeah, so there's, right when you enter the Crown Tundra, there's a candy to your immediate left. And that one's always a medium. Uh, and then it gets more interesting after that. Um, <laughs> when you go off to the right, there's one that's a 59% rare, uh, 20% or sorry, 59% M, 20% uh, rare candy, and 20% small. Um, and ideally, for the non, for the runs that don't need large candies, um, for get or shifu, um, you just want to get the two mediums and then leave. Um, if you need more candies beyond those two, then you have to walk a little bit further to hit the peony cutscene. Um, and then after that, there's two 10% um, M's and then another 50% M. Uh, and then after all of that, you can also head down to Freezington, 
check the mayor candy uh, that we just saw. Uh, that one is 15% L and 5% extra large, which is uh, always a good time when you hit that extra large. <laughs> yeah, so the the large candy for cub food gets it immediately to 20, level 20. Um, and then by the time you get to the final fight in the Isle of Armor, you're 21. If you get any extra candies along the way, like small, a small plus a large also gets you 22 for the final fight, which means almost all cub food are runnable. And so a lot of the time your, your cub food depends on its speed. If you have too low speed, you just can't get enough speed by leveling up uh, with enough blissies for it to even be worth it. You could technically grind like five or six of them if you really wanted to. That's not really val uh, valid for any fast times. Um, so that's really nice. The, lar the extra large candy gets your cub food to level 29, which means you don't have to even have to worry about Rocky Helmet or uh, Reversal at all. You just get Brick Break and stomp with that. That's always a good time if you get that. I don't think anyone's gotten that in a Getter Shifu run. You've gotten one in one of the alt mains though, right? Spider? I got it in the Wulu one. <laughs> oh, well, then. That's with the Wulu one. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah, this is but this is really interesting. We actually um, not only this this actually was as Spider mentioned. We kind of started this with alt main runs, and then we kind of adapted them to the the the, the standard runs. So this is a nice sort of lead into um, what you see on screen here is a Starmie. Uh, this is uh, Shua doing um, probably a slightly unconventional strat here to catch the Starmie. So what? So when I initially routed this, um, there's a so actually, there was one other thing. You can only, the highest level Pokemon you can catch at this point in the run is 20. You cannot throw balls at anything higher level. So this is a perf this is a great um, Pokemon to use for uh, for this uh, run as an alt main because it's already the highest level possible. So the strat I came up with is that you get the Crown Tundra candies to get your. You can do it with Sobble. You can do it with Grookey. Um, uh, you get that Pokemon to level 20 or higher so that you can actually get a good catch rate on the Starmie. Um, and if you weaken it, it's it's fairly decent chance to get in quickly. Um, you can see Shua tr is trying something a little bit crazy here, um, and he got a very good time with this run. Uh, it's a 112 with Starmie, which is quite a lot faster than the old record and is within a minute and a half of the current record, on English at least, um, for uh, Don't Get Urshifu. And so, as you can see, what he's doing here is he's... He's lower level, so this Starmie is, I think, a 5% catch rate at full health uh, with a Pokeball. Uh, so super, super unlikely to get in. So he weakened it, he also put it to sleep with Yawn on Slowpoke, which is quite genius. And uh, he got a nice catch here, <laughs> uh, which is really insane uh, on the Starmie. I don't know what the rate is on that, but it's still not super high. Uh, so... Uh, and then with a Starmie, all you have to do now is it doesn't have a good move set, so all you have to do really here is go back to the move relearner in Wedgehurst and teach it Surf and Psychic by the move relearner because some Pokemon have really good relearn move sets like Starmie. So, uh, and then Starmie just cleans up really well, it has good stats, um, both defensive and offensive, and speed, and so you just stomp through the game or the rest of the Isle of Armor with uh, with it. Uh, any other interesting alt mains? Uh, there's quite a few on the uh, on the board. You want to talk about a few of those, Spider? We don't, we don't want to spend too much much more time on this, but uh, there's some been, been some interesting routes that have been put together. Um, let's see. Of the ones that I've done, uh, Drifloon is the one that was surprisingly good because it just gets Shadow Ball and then Shadow Balls everything, um, except for a few fights where it actually you actually end up using Gust because uh, it's. You just want that extra damage on the bug and fighting types. Um, I was not expecting Drifloon to be any good when I started it, but it's actually pretty decent. As someone who's routed Drift by Drifloon all main, I am also very surprised from the sounds of that. Like, Drifloon is not good. You just get Shadow Ball like level 18 and then you're yeah, good. I, I guess it works <laughs> well for this, but... <laughs> Drifloon as a whole is not a good Pokemon to try and use in the in the game, though. So, but like, I guess it, like you say, it just works really well for this somehow. Sorry, I just had to jump in with that. Oh no, that's fine. No, it's all no worries, Jordan. 
Um, so I, I, my, I have a list that I'm keeping track of here. That's that's got a list of all the mains that we've we've done. There's a, been a few of us that have jumped in. Morgrim is another uh, person who's enthusiastically tried a few new, uh, surprisingly fast uh, runs um, or Pokemon to main for this. Um, so just running down the list of runs from fastest to slowest, there's been 15 so far that we've done. So this has really exploded. Uh, so we have Drizzile as the fastest, then Starmie. Uh, Kadabra is surprisingly fast as well. Um, it gets a really good move from the Turd Tutor in the Dojo. And it's not so good for Shield, but it's very good for Swords. Some of these work better on some versions versus others. Flacky is another great one that I just uh, got a pretty decent time with today. That would be awful for Sword because of the poison types, but works really well for Shield. Uh, Noctowl is another surprisingly quick one. Corvus Squire, Vicavolt. Spider, you did that one. Uh, a little bit about that. Uh, Vicavolt is fantastic because uh, you just grab the Thunderstone, go to Count and Tundra, evolve it um, twice, and then it learns Thunderbolt on level up. And then from that point on, you never use a move other than Thunderbolt. Uh, <laughs> because it just has such a high special attack stat and Thunderbolt is such a good move that you just destroy everything. It is a bit slow, that's the major... Yeah, depending on your it. speed, you can get outsped by a lot of stuff in the Tower of Waters, which is unfortunate, but uh, otherwise it's really good. Yeah, that was that was an interesting one to, to see too. Like, do, do either of you two like have personal, like, personal favorites? From by the list of the old means. Uh, Vicavolt might be my favorite because we accidentally found a spot where you level it up by fighting a static stunk tank that oh. will use <laughs> memento on you. Oh yeah, I'm aware of it's that. Its only attacking move is, I think, Sucker Punch. Yep. <laughs> so you just if you get a level uh, ten or eleven, um, I can't think of the first form right now. But if if that's your catch then you want to get that extra XP to hit level 12. Uh, and so you just fight the Skunk Tank and level up off of its memento. Yeah. Uh, Spider just mentioned the Tower of Water. So a lot of these alt mains, it's just faster to go to the second tower, normally for like Sobble and for also Urshifu. Although you can actually do with Get Urshifu, you can do the Tower of Waters, although it is riskier. Tower of Water is just quicker to get to, and some of these alt mains do better. Uh, like Thickabolt, like Thwacky. Even Starmie does pretty well, obviously because it's psychic type, it wouldn't do so well against the dark types. Do you want to sort of fast forward Jordan to the uh, to the tower? Uh, yep, I can do. I think it's about forty seconds faster to get to the Tower of Waters than the Tower of Darkness. Yeah, so sometimes the fights just go so much faster, even if they are a tiny bit slower. It's it's even worth it just to do the Tower of Waters because it's so good. Uh, Starmie doesn't do as amazing as it, as you'd like here, because it does have to two-shot a few things, but overall it has a really good moveset, so nothing much to worry about here. Uh, some of the other alt mains that have been done have been Arcanine. That's kind of the one that I started with in terms of alt mains that I, I've always wanted to try, because there was a Ninetales route um, a long time ago that was routed. Uh, and uh, I looked at Arcanine, and it, it does a decent job, but there's a bunch of others that have emerged as being quite a lot faster. Uh, Drifloon, as Spider mentioned, then we have Ninetales, uh, which is... Spider kind of worked on with the Crown and Tundra candies. Uh, Gyarados, uh, that one involves fishing. That's always a fun time. Uh, Reboot, uh, so all three starters have been done. Uh, Reboot is the worst, unfortunately. It just doesn't get good moves. You have to... It's interesting, the newest route for Reboot doesn't even use the Cramomatic, which is something I was looking at. Anyone who's played Sword and Shield knows that that's always a fun fun mechanic. You tried so uh, hard to make Cramomatic work, and it just doesn't. Yeah, it's, it's pretty slow. You have to get extra items, and yeah, it's... There's the current route by... As well, isn't there? For the chromatic lock of scenes. Yeah, you have to you have to get a bunch of watts, and then you have to get a bunch of items that are a certain... There's points ascribed, I guess, to each one, and then they have to be certain types, specifically the first item you use. So for, for Reboot, if you're using... If you want to get a fire-type move, you have to start with a fire item. Um, and so... I think, which item, I don't know which item I use. There's a berry that I was using to start with. And then for the stronger moves, I end up getting the charcoal just to use as an item in the cram medic. That's kind of slow. Um, then also we have Impidimp um, by Morgrim did that one. That was a really interesting one because he's 
they've done some a few of these alt mains where you actually do a max raid battle to get the Pokemon, and it comes up to level 20, which is a very interesting idea that I never really thought could be fast. But the Noctowl run I mentioned earlier, which has a 114, uh, mid-114 time, uh, uses a max raid Hoot Hoot, which is insane. There's also anyone who's a uh, uh, Colosseum and XD fan. There's a Ludicolo alt main as well. There it is. Uh, there and then also it. finally we have Double, uh, which is rounds out the list. So yeah, lots of interesting uh, sort of creative routes that have been put together um, for this very short category. And there's been a little lot more interest in this, which has been awesome to see. So uh, anything else you kind of want to talk about, Spider, with this? Oh, no, I think that covers everything. I, I guess, like, just one thing at least. Like, I've not been, I've not gone around to doing any of these, but seeing them, like, seeing them pop up has been really interesting. And it's also, like, because they are much shorter runs compared to for anything, pretty much, uh, uh, Switch-wise, at least. It's also a good way to get into routing if you're interested because there's not a massive room there's not too many different fights i would imagine yeah at least so yeah i think at this point most everyone who's running them is just doing their own routes um no one's really not or there's there's some routes being shared but because it is so quick to route everyone is just kind of doing it themselves yeah so to anyone who wants to actually get into routing as well but don't want to like do a three four hour run like route out a three or four mm -hmm. hour run this is probably the best place you can start you just want at least to a little taste of it yeah and, and as as we mentioned earlier with the candies it's you get you have to kind of get lucky a little bit in some cases getting your uh, crown tundra candies but the route the, the runs themselves are so much more consistent um there's so many plates, and the old route there, and, and Jordan, you you ran this as well, uh, and, yeah. and, and Etiquette's done this as well. You guys know that there's a lot of really nasty fights in the old route that you had to deal with. Oh, yeah. Um, where you need to oh, get yeah. Torrent set up, you can't get crit, you can't get confused. Uh, <laughs> it, it's just awful. And then, of course, on top of that, you have to use Muddy Water as your main attacking move, which is 85% accurate, so it's... It's 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 nice to see we have a nice, it, not only a more consistent route, but also a much. It was also faster, so win win. Yeah, because like all of the original routes of was from those very first days that came out with um. Like Gar I, I know Garth did a lot of this. I'm trying to think like a head bump. I'm pretty sure did a fair amount at the beginning as well. Um. Other than these, maybe even Damon, like Mind of Damon, or a couple. Like little things, but yeah, it's but like there hasn't been too much change from the beginning, so it also just seems like a, a lot. Like, it's, just, it's, it's fresh, like it's fresh stuff as well, which is always nice. Everyone likes a new, yeah, for sure. Game. So, if, any, if anyone's if anyone has these games and interested, I highly recommend doing these runs if you want to get into sword and shield speedrunning, it's they're nice and quick, and uh, you need the DLC, but. That's the kind of the main, one main thing you need, but I definitely recommend. Don't shield speed run is great. Do it. Do it now. Um, but that is everything in terms of related to noted runes and then also a little added extra section that we've just had now. So on to the marathon runs that have just been. And there's been a fair few. Um, some of them I was not able to find time for, but it's just as uh, oh, do you want me to go through them, or do you want to? Because like I know I mean, you've got you've got marathon run uh, coming up in a bit, so I don't know if you want to talk about this or anyone else wants to. Just in general, I like, go through them. I throw this yeah, on well, to you. Kind of My apologies, but. <laughs> So which which one is this one here? This is so, like, this looks like this long one speed is, run summit, right? Yeah, long speed yeah. run summit. Sorry, probably should have mentioned that. So as I think well. th I think this is um, user nine three eight three two six red green dex completion. I'm not sure. Um, this is interesting because the time was very oh. very very long. So I'm not sure if this is a sort of manipulous kind of run or a glitchless um, run. It 
might be manipulous, but it's it's definitely glitchless. It's the glitchless two player. They're playing it by themselves, it looks like. But it's the glitchless two player uh essentially diploma oh. from like Let's Go. Yeah. So yeah. you might, I don't know if you've noticed in the like the bottom left, they're actually just showing at this moment how they're playing it. Oh like someone yeah. else is like holding the camera. So like, it looks like they have like oh. four controllers, like two controllers per hand. And then wait, this is one this is one person doing this. Yeah, one person's doing this. This is crazy. <laughs> they're like super impressive. It might okay. Now they I'm gonna have to go back because yeah, they're about to they're about to close it. But yeah, that's how they are at the moment. Oh, I say at the moment. <laughs> that's how they did the run. Wow. So yeah. No, I just I thought this would be good just to have in the background. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> that's really that's really cool yeah definitely a good choice can we watch the uh the end uh i wonder how it ends um i find what the it seems like there's a lot of trading at the end yeah oh his game's gone okay <laughs> oh yeah yeah it was only for that little section uh, i happened to find that by accident uh but yeah it's a, it's a lot of like just the trading at the end. I think the, the Japanese last... sprites. I can't. <laughs> that dragon air was something else. <laughs> yeah, with it being green and red as well. Yeah, it's got. It's something. It's definitely something. And I think the very last thing is traded as well was like Machamp. If I can. I'm going to try and get it because. Oh, it's been a bit slow. Oh. Okay, I'll show it. But basically, just like the yeah. chat was just like spamming that Twitch, like the global Twitch mash amp emote. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the prime ones, yeah. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> yeah, there he is. <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> oh, <champ. laughs> yeah, this was, like I mentioned, it was from Long Speed Run Summit. But. There's many other bathroom runs, which that Gengar back sprite is something else too. Yeah, green, it's gr like green is notorious, isn't it for the sprites? Yeah, and it's it's I, funny I because I, I think all of the back sprites remain the, the same on the international version. So like that's if you have a Gengar in the English version, that's the back sprite. But the back sprites were made to match the Japanese front sprites, so some of them are just like really mismatched in the English version. A Geo dude. So yeah, Japanese sprites uh, there's something <laughs> else. <laughs> but uh Yeah, so I think like what's it? The, the, the very first marathon that happened in the battle was what well, not not the same, which is like the Sonic Adventure community, like the the three D so no, it's not even the three D songs. I think it's just Sonic like the Sonic Adventure B run communities, like non Sonic Adventure marathon, and that was Dry Whale with PMD Explores the Sky Fast Any Percent No in the Mail, which was unable to finish. Uh, there was Alathon. I don't know if that's related to the PAL region or if it's like. But yeah, either way, so that was Das with a quality of no snags. I ended up finishing in 354.35. Uh, I, I want to talk to you it's about this because I could not find a time for the life of me for this. Uh, it didn't seem like none of the runs were highlighted. I couldn't find the pass run. But how was your no glitches allowed run? Uh, that run was that run was pretty good. Um... I think it was so. This is a yeah. I've probably talked about this in the podcast. It's a it's a, a Johto based hack in with the fire red leaf green base. So you do the fire red starter minute. I did go use the backup. Um, obviously, I did try for a minute, but didn't get it. The time was pretty good. I think I it would have been a PB if it was a if it was uh, a fresh minute. Um, mm -hmm. I did die to red though, so uh, it happens. <laughs> pretty good overall though. I don't think I got. I don't think I ran into any of the roamers. Those, 
So that's uh, there's something like something as well because I've had runs where I hit the Raikou and then ten seconds later I hit it again. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty funny. And in that marathon, we also had Moy Guy doing Diamond Any Percent Glitchless with Piplup. We saw um, them do this at PSR Marathon as well. And there was a Crystal um, Full Item Randomizer. I don't yeah. know what the E stands for. Extreme. But, uh, extreme. extreme. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whatever that entails. I just don't know. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Uh, with uh, Dirt Swa, Vandia, Ergote, and Wing Wing Wingidge. Um, so that, uh, I did get to see that one. That one was in the middle of the night, unfortunately. So I didn't get to, get to catch that one. Uh, then there was my run, of course. And then we had, uh, Das Pharaoh doing, uh, XD any percent. We had, they had also done Call of No Snags at that Palathon marathon, um, earlier as well. And then the long speed run summit, we saw this crazy, uh, red, green dex completion run. Uh, we also had Ringo doing sword, uh, Galarian star tournament with a 646.08. Uh, how does that time stack up, guys? Anyone who's done this, I know etiquette, you've done this. Um, yeah, so the English record is a 707. Um, Japanese will be a little bit faster, but also Ringo is amazing at the game, so <laughs> yeah, uh, 646. I think if I remember right, uh, their PB is in the 640s, so um, it seems like a really solid time, especially for a category as you know potentially RNG heavy as that is. I noticed Ringo also got into those Isle of Armor runs as well, so that'll be interesting to see how far those go. Uh, it's a little side note. Uh, we also have Shigama doing, who did Super PMD, any percent um, Super Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, any percent No Wonder Mail with a 656, 27. Then we had two more marathons. There was a Run Them All, which is a French marathon. We had Silver, Silver doing uh, Brilliant Diamond, any percent, 2206. Uh, not too bad of a time. I'm not familiar with, um, with how those uh, runs all go in terms of uh, consistency or volatility. Uh, whether you can lose a run really easily if you mess up the uh, the glitches, but yeah, the it's not too too bad. The problem is a lot of the places that you could mess up um, are unforgiving in terms of trying again. Like you can mess up. It's mm. possible to like mess up the movement in the out of bounds, for example, and in order to to save that, you have to redo the whole out of bounds section, which can take you know multiple minutes. So, it really depends on like if you mess up one or two of those, you could easily add five minutes to your time. Yeah. So there's another uh, there's another any percent run further down at another marathon that was done that was quite a bit faster. So probably got a bit yeah. luckier on the uh, on that. Uh, another Pokemon run at Run the Mall, which is Bill Bonsai versus RT Coden 25, a red any percent glitchless, no instant text race. Um, this is kind of a variant of the any percent glitchless run, which doesn't use instant text, as you would imagine by the uh, category name. Uh, a little bit more consistent uh, and much more race friendly. Uh, so we had 156.31 for, I believe, Bill, and then a 201.39 for RT Coden. Um, so good showing of that category. And then finally, we had um, at, is this PAX Australia? I'm not sure. It's the Australian yeah. Speedrun Marathon ASAP 2022 aspect with Shining Pearl any percent, 18 at 14. And, and he did that very recently. It was only the last couple days. Yeah. Uh, and then... Yeah, yeah, that's it for the, um, yeah, sorry, Jordan, that's it for the uh, marathons runs that have been passed, and now we'll just briefly sh uh, preview what's to come this month. So I want to take this away. Uh, um, I, I can, yeah, I can take care of it. So um, what we're seeing here, this is uh, basically the same marathon that we were just talking about with Aspect. Uh, this is ASAP 2022, um, and on the 9th of October, uh, early in the morning, British time um, will be uh, Trunchy VT doing new snap any percent. Um, next one is uh, Speedrunners Kawai Zone. Uh, this is another Japanese marathon. Um, and Shua will be doing BDSP Catch Shaman. Um, I'm assuming this is like a, 
using some of the glitches from the original mm. release of the game. So that should be a pretty fun run. Um, next one is Speed Remiser 2. Um, we've got Alpha 5 doing TCG any percent glitchless. Uh, no reset, no manip on the 10th of October, also kind of early in the morning. Um, and then, yeah, so um, next up, this is um, another big marathon. This is RPG Limit Break 2022. Um, this is a lot of carryover from RPG Limit Break 2020 because that event got canceled because of COVID. Um, so some of the runs that you would have seen then are going to be shown here. Um, I at least recognize two of the three. So um, the, the first one is going to be Like a Noob doing PMD uh, Blue Rescue Team Any% percent No Wonder Mail on October 17th, um, around four in the morning. Um, next is uh, Zoe Vermillion, Leggy Starstream, and Dijon Ketchup doing a Crystal Rando uh, Triple Co-op Blackout Bingo. Um, that's going to be on October 21st, around 8 at night. Um, and then finally, um, run right before the finale uh, is going to be Echi versus Kizaron doing Sword versus Shield any percent race. Um, that's going to be on October 22nd. Um, about halfway through the marathon list, uh, this is the Speed Souls Charity Marathon. Um, and we've got Nerd Squared doing Shining Pearl any percent no out of bounds. Um, that's going to be on October 22nd as well, same time as the last run. Um, next marathon is Green Gaming Fest. Uh, there's three Pokemon runs, including a couple people in the call right now. Um, you've got Fury ST doing. Uh, Brilliant Diamond, any percent glitchless. Uh, that's going to be on October 23rd, about midday. Um, later on that day, you've got Primal Pizza doing red, any percent glitchless, no instant text. Um, and then Iron and Spider Z are both going to be doing Sword versus Shield, don't get Urshifu. And that's going to be on the 24th of October. You both excited for that, yeah, right? This one's kind of interesting. When we submitted this, this was before we did all those road changes. Uh, oh, so it doesn't look anything we were like at, it did what we submitted. <laughs> yeah, so it's actually really, really funny. So our, our estimate is extremely, extremely high. Um, uh, we actually submitted it as a uh, bid war to race either the Sobble routes, which are the fastest routes currently, uh, or we do an Arcanine versus Ninetales race, which we thought were going to be pretty fast alt mains. Turns out they're kind of middle of the, middle of the pack, but still very evenly matched. And uh, if you want to see one or the other, don't. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, donate during the event because we we are totally open to running either of them. It'll be a great race regardless. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Uh, keeping the streak of podcast people uh, being in marathons, uh, we've got Game Over Cancer Fall 2022, uh, where Tucker is going to be doing Soul Silver Any Percent Glitchless on October 23rd. Are you excited for that run too? Tucker is muted. We have stepped, oh. have stepped away briefly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, He's excited. Yeah. We assume Tucker is excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, second to last marathon uh, that we're going to mention here. Uh, this is, uh, looks like Brat Halloween uh, 2022. This is a Brazilian marathon. Uh, there's two runs here. You've got LD doing Red Custom Starter on October 25th, about 3 p.m. Um, doesn't say which starter, but uh, yeah. maybe that's a bid war or something that we'll find out later. Um, and then uh, TSO15 is doing Fire Red Kaizo Ironmon, uh, Brock percent. So I'm assuming that's going to be sort of a more of a showcase than a speed run. Um, getting to getting to Brock doing Kaizo Ironmon should be pretty fun. Um, and then finally, um, another American in-person marathon. Uh, this is going to be Pace 2022, um, and we've got two Pokemon runs here as well, uh, both on the same day. So this is Halkiri, uh doing Legends Arceus Any% percent on October 31st, about 2 in the morning. Um, and then right after that is going to be Glenjamin doing Poke Park Wii Any%. Percent. So definitely want to check those out. Yeah, and then uh, one... Last thing before the leaderboard roundup, the red tournament is currently going on. 
uh, right now he's currently in the middle of losers round two and winners round three. I'm not sure how the how Ekman are you still in here? Yes, hello. How have they been organizing? Like, oh, how's the uh, the knockout stages been? Uh, like format is basically we have like uh, a winners round and a losers round, and the winners round, um, the winner of the race, uh, always three person races, <laughs> if possible, um, the winner uh, go stays in winners round. Second place goes to loser's round, and third place is eliminated from winner's round, or like, yeah, okay. immediately out of the tournament. And then loser's round, once you're in there, you always have to win your race, or else you're out of the tourney. So yeah, that's... Hi, uh, I've returned. Welcome back. I <laughs> confirmed you are excited about your marathon win. Yeah, um, I guess... If you'd let me talk about it a little bit. Yeah, sure. um, so it's kind of hard to see how Soul Silver glitch lists will be done at a marathon, but it's actually going to be using um, one of the older routes, um, which I've been playing recently, and I think it's really marathon friendly um, as opposed to the current record route, which does Volter Flip. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited for that one. I get to show it off. Should be should be a good run, and yeah, that's on the twenty third of October, at around quarter to six UK time in the evening. Yep. But yeah, so uh, where were we on up to with uh, with this? Uh, like, what were you saying, Eggman? Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've uh, lost. I, I can't remember. Uh, but so yeah, it's like so. You just have to win in this round, basically. In, yeah, uh, we are that far into the tournament, so you're in the winners round. Uh, that's like the last winners round before the grand finals, actually. Oh, okay. So now it's only win, uh, uh, only two races in the winners round. The winners go to grand finals, and the losers, all of them, go to losers round in that specific round. No. Okay. Round two has been a banger, by the way. Yeah, the last round. Round three started today. Um, not as much of a banger, but I reckon there's going to be exciting races in round three. A lot of good, very good players are left. Like, everyone who's left in the tournament is a good player. It was a very stacked tournament this year. Unfortunately, you, just before the podcast started, uh, you came second in your race. Yeah. So you, are, <laughs> you are out now, unfortunately. But... So, like, pretty solid. It's got pretty far. Like, did you? So, I mean, did you win the? I could probably just check. Couldn't I? Just did you win, or would you? Did you come from? This is round one. Yeah, I, I I got second place in winners round one. So I went to losers round immediately, and then had a very very close race with Etienne. Uh, uh, I I won by like I think four seconds. It was not or like it was decided on. Like right on on champ, the literally last Pokemon, where it could be Zydus. Um So yeah, it was very exciting. And then yeah, today was uh, a lot of RNG happened in the race, and it's Pokemon, so yeah. So he didn't make it. On the bright side, you now have time for Moon again. <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> Ultra Moon. <laughs> a lot of time. I need a lot of time for that. <laughs> You got a month, I believe. True. Yeah, got to believe. Um, but yeah, that's that's everything onto the leaderboard roundup. As always, if you just see anything, shout it out. <laughs> uh, like Ekman, how, how is your how is your red? Uh, any percent glitchless? How was that run? Uh, it was quite funny. I just ran and we did attempts, uh, and. Because I practiced for attorney, so I just did some PB attempts with the race road, which is not optimal, and just randomly got on a run like six attempts in, just very lucky. And yeah, yeah. I think got a PB for like 40 seconds, and 148 is a pretty good time. I, I'm happy enough. Yeah, it's a very good time. It's, it's so good, it can get you 34th. 
True. Like a race rat with IT. That is. Yeah, yeah, I got IT, but I also bought revives and stuff and extra money, which I didn't Thank use, you. obviously, but I needed <laughs> it for back slot. Yeah. The 38th, Chomsky with a 149.17. Uh, 3 are 57. Uh, 58 with a 151.17. Joshua is drunk in 71st with a 152 flat. So some solid times there. Ed Bob in 10th with the 2 hours 36 in uh, English as classic. Solid run there. That's a craze. The craze. <laughs> There's 43 people that have done, or more, that have done Classic now. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. That, that is That's, quite... Yeah. It's quite surprising. I, uh, I did run I did runs of that four years ago or so, and there were like six people on the board. So it's awesome to see that later board get bigger. Zidosh in 11th uh Gold any percent glitchless. 31756. That's on Weed Bop. <laughs> Is that a German world record now? Yep, I believe so. <laughs> it was a big goal for him. 10th place for J Taddles in Crystal Manipulus 34453. Uh, 11th for Macwing on any percent glitchless for Sapphire 20244. Oh, I see, uh, Fire Red Leaf Green 202. Oh, oh yeah, 202. It's a good time. That is, yeah, a very good time. Again, I feel like I say every podcast, but lots of people are like top end, like, which if you compare to like a year or maybe two years at this point, like, yeah. it's such a different, like, like time. Yeah, the standard has gone quite ridiculous and fire red didn't used to be like that also a pair of um e4 round two runs g shark and icy yeah 342 18 for g shark in 12th and then keeping icy in third at 338 38 uh 11th of incento a 233 59 and then 13th of bouncy uh with a 235 46 I didn't even know Bouncy was running in Middleton. Yeah, I think that's like his main thing now. Bad boy. Nowadays. It seems like he plays a new game every every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One thing that's his main thing, it's Emerald now. So, cool. Uh, we bent us in fourth for uh, Diamond Pearl any percent at 57.34. Yep. Um, getting, getting very close to Skoa. Yeah, that's a satisfactory time for him. I believe he's moved on, but ah. it's a nice PB for him. Look at one, hey. one hour and one second in 13. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I what played... Happened to the, what happened to the sub hour? Okay, look, I, I literally <laughs> played DP any percent for one day. I got a 102.00 and then a 100.01. This is a frame perfect 100.01, by the way. Nice. Um, and then... The next day that I tried playing Diamond, I, I found out that my cart was like super defective and like it just wouldn't, it would just crash randomly. Oh, no. Like not even like joking with like the tweaks and stuff, like it's not, not crashing after messing up a tweak, it just crashes randomly. So I can't play Diamond anymore. I'm forever outside of the sub hour club. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I wasn't going to grind that much anyway. I, I was only hoping for like a 58 for maybe some PSR ranking points. <laughs> uh, gotta get the PSR ranking points. Of course, yeah. Did, so, did you know there's, that, there's that... people there's people who will try and get me to change things. Mm. So that... You said it was a good change, okay? <laughs> and it worked, so... <laughs> so hoping for one of my changes. Oh, I know. It's I need to. I 
I mean, ideally, I'd love like timings, but I don't think that's going to happen because that's a lot of time and effort. So basically, I need to ask Eggman. Eggman, please. Well, I need to just ask you about like timings on your end as well. But I want like a third opinion as well, just so because yeah, just for just for my own personal confidence. I have no clue with the uh, 3DS low timings and expected time differences between the runs. I mean, it's different between every game, so it's yeah. hard to say. Like, well, yes, yeah, so I, I, I did mean for each game, I guess, but yeah, yeah. Either way, though. Anyway, <laughs> back to the leaderboard roundup. What's your in third for uh, uh, the emulator uh, leaderboards for? Diamond Pearl any percent a 102.46 uh, for Platinum any percent mine was here in for third with a 244.09 apparently that was more work for you Tucker <laughs> yeah it's just that I've been verifying his runs but I actually watched that run and it was a nice uh nice solo gold look run so it's good for him yeah, still and... going for like a 242 I believe good luck then in that case to them and then stocky though in seventh with the 25756 uh article still silver 80% glitchless sixth place uh for effective ash uh, affected ashes 33653 look at emulator world record congratulations 34146 thanks uh this is um this is me playing on the playing the old route that i mentioned earlier that i'll be running for the marathon just uh gonna do more runs of this it's a good route um can't get world record but certainly want to get the record before Walter flip was implemented which is like a 338 I'll definitely do that and i'll probably play it anyway for practice also ashes just want to say 336 is a nice time for him I believe the day before he got this PB, he lost a run to red that was like the exact same pace, which was quite sad, but um glad that he rebounded quickly. Got that pace anyway the next day. It's a good PB for him. And yeah. he's I believe he's still going for maybe 335. Well, hopefully they get that as well soon. Um took it, still you. Um <laughs> why you want to ban fake out? Well, um, I have I made a compilation video from this run alone. Oh no. Basically <laughs> highlighting every single place where I could have gotten fake out. Um and I each each time it was like only a one in four chance to get fake out, and then I got it every single time on every life art in this run, and it cost me fourth place. Cost I you am, fourth. Yeah, because Fourth place is like six seconds faster than this run, and fifth place is four seconds faster. It was very costly, <laughs> those fake outs, <laughs> and I'm not happy about it. But yeah, this run, um, it was very nice pace. It was a very good pace up to like Bryson, um, it, like neck and neck with um, like top three, any of the top three times. So yeah, I think I'll keep playing for hopefully a 312. That'd be satisfactory for me. Yeah. yeah hopefully yeah. with less fake outs. Oh, hopefully so. Never lost as many turns as I have in black white as in my PB. <laughs> we mentioned Dex's run earlier. We mentioned that buzzer. Tucker! Again, you, you're running everything. <laughs> uh, XY, 14th place, 349.51. Yeah, um, it's... happy to clutch out sub 350. I lost like two minutes. It's in similar places where Headbob lost his Simon record in Frost Cavern and on NSR Rival. Kind of like the same thing, but um, yeah, I lost two minutes there, but I managed to clutch out the sub 350. Happy about my improvement in XY, and I'll play it in a couple of months again. I'm sure. Uh, fair. Uh, Wave in 25th with a 357.56. Thing. Wave Wave is showing a lot of promise in XY. I think it'll get a top time pretty soon. 
Wave is very good at many games. Yep. <laughs> uh, very sick. The uh, classical cat. The four was at three fifty nine oh seven as well. That's Congrats Joanna. There. Yeah. That is Joanna. Um. Yeah. Ooh, third place on any percent the Mega Ruby emulator. Uh, for Mikey two fifty five fifty nine. Pretty solid time there. Mention headboard bouncy in fifth with a four fifty six forty six in uh, any percent for uh, sun or for moon, I guess. Quite a, quite a few people around moon this one. Quite good to see. Always good to see. Um, third place as well for Daniel uh, in any percent. English on the emulator a five oh five fifty eight. Um, any percent no ma uh, no mount. I was gonna say major skips. Uh, any percent no mount skips for Evie. Sixteenth uh, place for Trivaria a three oh eight oh five. Second place in diploma for Amber uh, for New Amber and Kick and Run. A four forty-five thirty-five. Uh, seventh place for Thomas Patrick WX T Pat uh, and Kick and Run. A four fifty-five fifty-three. And then fourteenth for Joker Sleeps and Greta Ice Vixen with a five oh three oh five. And then fourth uh, for all uh, all attainable Pokemon and Pikachu for Pulse. Uh, five twenty-seven forty-two. Also been doing like a lot of AOP by. I remember correctly. I don't know if he moved on a bit, but I know there was a good chunk of time. Yeah, I think he's been going back to it every now and then. Also, um, Ultra Moon I've seen. Who yeah, calls? yeah. Pulse oh, was yeah. doing some Ultra Moon runs the other day. Oh, might need to check in on Pulse for sanity. <laughs> I might be losing it. <laughs> some strange categories, for sure. Wait, Edica, have you started doing AOP Pikachu yet? No, um, I was sick all week. Oh yeah. I might. I'm supposed to do Ultra Moon, but I don't have time before Scarlet <laughs> Violet. So you did. All right, all right, I was gonna say you. If you were just gonna leave that, you don't have time, but then go and do AOP Pikachu. <laughs> well, AOP, I can just sort of pick up. I don't have to. Yeah. It, I, if I if you just left it enough. with time. Yeah. If you just left it with time. But then... Yeah. Actually, hey, uh, AOP is like an hour shorter, all right? <laughs> it actually is, yeah. <laughs> Type is in the way. Uh, anyway, it's all uh, you percent 1.2 plus third place for Truly, a 40820. Truly has been on some absolute great time. paces. Drew, yeah, it's a yeah. great time, but Truly's been on some absolute paces. Yeah, truly, really... uh, Eternatus has Truly's number, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's that as it is. He's lost, like, three runs that were on pace for, um, record. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that alone made him give up, uh, Candy Floss. He is currently doing some solvable runs. Well, he's moved on to the better one, but, like, uh... Is that time, is that time with Sobble or with Candy Floss? Uh, that's it's with, with Candy, Candy Floss. Floss, the 40820. Yeah, oh, damn. I believe truly with... Sobel's like a 4.10 from a while ago. I don't know if he's managed to finish a run since switching over. Switched um, over to the, the Dark Arts. The good side. Once once the <laughs> top end. I mean, Archidrill's the good side. Let's be All right, honest. okay. All right, <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, also, though, ninth for uh, Yukisai. Uh, 40959 just getting that sub 410. And then um you see the shoe with eleventh a four thirteen thirty. Uh and then also Zypotic with a four thirty three thirty nine. Uh Zypotic I know doing a lot of three DS stuff before, but we've got to wish recently. I need him to complete a run of Moon. The competition holding him to it. Uh, 
already mentioned Edgar's Ruin. Uh, 15th for uh, 8% sold in Japanese Kuri Hake with a 432.7. Um, Bob in 7th for 8% with DLC. Um, 40414 with the comment specifically. Did a run on a win. I don't like this category, so I won't be back for a while. I fully respect that. <laughs> Um, I think that was with Starmie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was a Starmie run. So, uh, like uh, from Crown, like the Crown Tundra, I assume. Still, um, yeah. Uh, Pedro apparently with the any percent with DLC Shield World Record. I was not aware of that one. Four hundred two twenty five though. Congrats there. Um, and then any percent with DLC is sword. Uh, Yukisai with oh yeah so turbo that's why I had a slight moment of confusion because I remember wait I was thinking like wait who's got like a 350 something but no uh, for turbo world record a 40144 and then second GL Phoenix with a 40313 then Etiquette how, yes. how was this run um it was okay it's the first DLC run I've done in like a year Mm -hmm. um i did it to improve my psr rankings <laughs> spreadsheet um <laughs> no what shame, was, no oh shame. it was uh it was a dragapult meme which i was actually really happy with um oh. just because I, I like dragapult as a pokemon and i i figured it would be fun to do not not a common one no i i don't think i've ever seen it in dynamax adventures and i was like looking at the the list of pokemon going into dynamax adventures and i was like one of the Pokemon near the top was Dragapult. I'm like, oh, Dragapult would actually be pretty cool. And then I ended up getting it. So I was I was pretty happy. What, what's your score at the moment for the PSI rankings? Overall? Uh, with whatever you want to mention. Um, I'm still first place on Switch. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, after the, after the boost. After the yep. hacking. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what, um, what happened? What boost was there? So, so it was... I, I basically, uh, I'm like 18th or something, 19th in Let's Go Diploma, which means there's like, quote unquote, 36 people ahead of me, but there's really not. There's really like 15 actual people ahead of me oh. just because everyone plays with each other. And so like Joker took like, I think we looked and it was like 13 of the 18 slots ahead of me had Joker sleeps in a run. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. And so instead of ranking it based on ranking, based do it based on like individual people that are ahead of you. Yeah, so how it's specifically done be so like I think it's it's Joker and T Pat who have the top time. They're both technically rank one. Um but then I think I was gonna say with Kicking Member and Keith, but that's a terrible example because Amber and Keith like uh, Amber and Kick and Run in seconds, so they'd just be joint second anyway. But like Joker and um uh, Joker and Jay Asher in third. Yeah, Joker and Jay Asher in third. Uh, so Joker's still ranked as first, but then Jay Asher is ranked as third. But then if there's like, say, Joker and Amber, and they happen to be fourth, they would not be ranked. No one would be, well, they wouldn't be ranked fourth. And it'd be whoever's like ranked fifth is technically ranked fourth. Yeah. That's, that's how it is right now? That's how it is right now. And Diploma is the sense. only case where that is the situation that's needed is yeah. let's go is such a pain <laughs> the PSI rankings because no, it wasn't only that originally when I was doing it the AOP border combined but they still showed both individuals so they'd just be like random like runs thrown in there it was <sighs> let's go is annoying <laughs> let's go is very annoying but it's it's fine that's fair <laughs> And then it got his free boost. Um, but yeah, anyway. And then I'm still I'm still fourth on the overall. Um, and just looking at it, these numbers haven't changed much since you originally did the sheet. So I feel like movement on the overall board is going to be like impossible. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it takes into account everything. You need to do something new, like something like new game wise specifically. So do crystal any percent. I will do scarlet violet next month. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I shouldn't want to be the only one. I should jump into like 
DS or something. I've done literally no, yeah, nothing it'll, with. Yeah, it'll be like DS would be a good, a good space or like. Um... You haven't done much Gen Three, have you? <laughs> no, not at all. I did, I did enough Sapphire to like finish a run or two, and then I never touched it again. Play Emerald. Emerald's fun. I've not done Emerald runs, but Emerald's just a great game, in my opinion. Gotta play the cat the games with only one category. Has yeah. so much more weight. <laughs> that is true, actually, yeah. That's kinda um, what I did with X and Black White, but I was gonna play them anyway. I don't want people calling me out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I played DP because I wanted to play all five DS games, and now I'm uh now I'm second in DS. Well, it's it's funny to too. get first though. It's get, it's funny for me. Too. Because I feel like the DS game I would want to do the most is the only one I've actually done already, which is Diamond and Pearl. And it's just because I know BDSP and I'm like the hard the, the problem I have with learning new games is if I'm learning a game in a region, I don't know. I don't know where to go and I get really demotivated. But because BDSP is basically just the exact same game in terms of map yeah. design, um, I'll at least know where I'm going. And so I feel like I'll have a much better time. But I've already done that run, so it won't even get me that many points. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. I still only have one run that qualifies for the sheet, so I'm by far the lowest ranked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'd be too f I don't think you'd be too far down still. Would you? My only run is sword any percent with DLC. Yeah, There's just so many categories in There's... the shield game uh, not shield games, the switch games that it you gotta play like all of them. <laughs> That's the only reason I'm as high as I am, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> A million categories across 3DS and Switch. Well, or ass specifically, and Switch games. Yeah. You, you, you do need to try and get that top three, though. O overall. I believe. See, wave, Wave's a beast. W wave is a... Um, wave's also now got X in there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so... Which also I makes it like, like so Raya and like Pokai, how much have they done varied wise? Raya has done so many things. Well, yeah, Raya's done almost everything, I'm pretty sure. But like, and I guess Pokai in that sense would also. Yeah, Edgar, just do Crystal 8%. <laughs> not this again. <laughs> it's not as good as it used to be, but. It'll, it'll still get you a fair amount of points taken off. Um, but yeah, so we already went over Edicus one. But in fourth, though, for uh, Brilliant Diamond, for 80% glitchless English, no turbo music off. Oh, we never covered that, did we? Did we? What was that last month? Music Wait, did, off. did we actually split it out? Yeah, music off, music's on, music on split now. Yeah, that, we covered that. Okay. I think Good. so, yeah. Alright, I just uh, everything blends into one. <laughs> but either way, music off uh, fourth place for uh, Fury ST uh, with a 321.49. Um, Erjo in fourth for Shining Pearl music off a 345.59. Um, second place for Yoshida Shu with music on 344.02. Uh, she just you with the brilliant diamond world record the music on a 34730 um and then yeah do any percent music on uh 1639 and uh for music off as well in japanese uh, music on for english and japanese 1639 and 2103 respectively uh both with no turbo because they don't have a Oh yeah, because yeah, they don't have a terrorist point, do they? But... No. And I am wondering why this leaderboard round has taken over an hour now. It's because of all these split categories and category extension. But sorry, <laughs> I'm just, I'm not actually being serious. <laughs> but it does take over an hour to do this now. I I have to like. Normally, I'd normally have to, I'd always, I'd always start this at like 6 p.m. my time, uh, just anyway, and it'd be finishing at like 
half pass. But now I, I have to start. If I don't start it, it's, it, it starts running the risk of maybe not being done in time for the podcast if I forget for long enough. Anyway, uh, Lens Arceus, any percent. Fourth place for T-Pat, uh, 35342 uh, on physical, I assume, still. Yeah. Uh, tenth place for Ryzen, a 41930. The 420 hype. Um, maybe also on physical. Because I'm, I, I don't know if Redskins. I know Redskins did Swish physical. I don't know if he did Legend of Arceus. But either way. Um, and then. Shady hasn't submitted his time. But Hulk uh, with the. A 340.05. That actually, yeah, that would have not been part of the last podcast. I don't think so yeah um now second place but yeah 34005 and then ninth for Ringo with a 43018 both on Japanese lows um Pokemon Stadium um Mystical with the world record for complete round one uh 54616 I missed that one my bad um Stadium 2, Jim Leader Castle round 1, 16th for Hen, a 221.47. Oh, Randall with a TCG, any percent glitch list, 54th, a 110.18. Pokemon card game, how to play DS, any percent from uh, second place for Yoshida Shu, 38.13. If you're not familiar with that game, it's a Japanese uh, exclusive um, to like tutorial, it's like tutorial games of how to play the DS clearly because it's how to play DS. I'm an idiot, right up my alley. <laughs> it is right oh, up yeah. your alley. I expect you to uh play this import it from Japan if you can find it. Been it's trying cool. for years, <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> I've, I've been looking to try and buy that game, it, it does not come up often, at least on like. Stuff like eBay, maybe the Japanese ones that could look, but that's more of a pay. Anyway, again, so snap any percent on Switch, fifth place for Yutor, uh, Yutorora, uh, 3733, and then sixth place on the 100% version for Switch, uh, for them as well, fifth, uh, 4510. Um, new snap, old Pokemon 2.x, third place for. Beatty Fire IX, like Beatty Fire 9, if it's meant to be Roman numerals, I don't know. Uh, 42212. Uh, look at all these pinball runes for Ruby Sapphire. So, like, maybe a speediest month for a long time. But anyway, uh, defeat Rayquaza Sapphire Field. Fourth place for Anago, 1558. Uh, 13th for 360 Chrism, 2241. Uh, Luzu with a 2329. Um, on the Ruby field side of things, my name is Andy. Uh, my name is Andy in third for 2145. Mentioned Amoeba's run earlier, but 360 Chrism again in fourth for complete Pokedex, a 74805. And then uh, a couple of Kachirachi runs, uh, fourth place for Bad Akko. A 4.52 and then in 6th, my name is Andy with a 5.30. Pokemon Coliseum, 17th for Swiftaloo in any percent, a 3.39.56. Um, any percent on emulator, Rayquaza Kingdom with a 6.09.40. And then no snags, 5th place for Dasvaro with a 3.54.35. Oh, that might be in the Palathon, maybe. Congrats. Um, in Marathon PB, maybe. Um, Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness, Battle CD, RTA, um, English, all 50 CDs. Uh, third place for Dasvaro with a 235.48. Um, Mystery Dungeon, Explorers of Sky, second for any percent, oh, second, second for SBD Wolf, a 5 hour 49 second time in any percent Wonder Mail. English DS slash 3DS. Um, 
Third place for eponymous with 80% wins male on emulator, a 458.39. And I assume that was the same run as the B Dark Rai, uh that B Dark Rai run, which was a 642.30. Uh World record for eponymous in all icons on English with Wonder Mail uh, on emulator a 1048.16. Uh, Pokemon Rumble complete the game console aim percent no passwords RDA with the world record a 155.48. Um, Pokemon Tournament DX sixth place for danced uh, or danced toe. Danstow? Danstow. Uh, 619 with a 339 12.22. 22 is very important. Um, Pokemon Insurgents, any percent turbo hard mode, Blaney's category, uh, BED Gaming uh, in 10 hours 23 and 21 seconds. You know anything about that, Renayan? Clearly not. Um, Crystal Clear, second place for one badge, uh, one badge glitchless 2.4. Pichu Rocks, uh, 100, a 241. Um, Renegade Platinum, mentions Dutchie's run, but for any percent glitchless, MFDV with a 251.34. That's world record there. Oh, and man. category extensions. There's many. <laughs> There's many. Enderborn. Enderborn once Everybody again. Busy, busy month once again. We can see. Um, any in particular would you be out of them that stands out? Lobo is interesting to me. Just as a as a Pokemon to do a route around. The yeah, fair play Enderborn. Yeah. Um. There is more custom starters for. I don't know which specific game, but either one of gold, silver, or crystal. Uh, Storms and Corsair, uh, with a fair few, and then also, good job, Mr. 2% in Ocean Bagel. Oh, Ocean Bagel with 100%. Oh, no, 100%. Level 100. Uh, 42958. Uh, fourth place for Kadir and Manipolis for Fire Red Leaf Green, a 21237. Uh, Amoeba with the no centers slash marks world record uh, for Emerald, a 32232. And just going back a couple, Battle Pike Gold world record for Effective Ashes, 5210. Oh, and then also all main pokes world records for keeping it icy with electrode. Where yeah, with electrode a three oh four. Is it an in-game trade? Is it an in-game trade called Billy? If anyone happens to know. I think Billy is the one in Johto. So I yeah. think this is just the Billy is the one in Heart Gold Soul Silver. Oh okay. but um Yeah, th this is just a minute to Voltorb in Noob Marvel. Oh. But yeah, um, it's a good run. Oh, this isn't his actual PB. It's a 302 now. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, shout out to Billy. Shout out to Billy, I guess. <laughs> uh, 80% alt languages. French Manipolis, uh, second place for the Mad Sunflower, 115.31. Uh, world record in 80% blindfolded. Uh, that's uh, Serpin with the 128.09. Played on the emulator. First uh, blindfolded run of a DS game, as far as I know. It's cool. Yeah, fair play. Yeah, that's going to involve blindfolded tweaking, I guess, as well. Which I have no idea how you would do that. Um... Stocky with E4 round 2 glitched in Platinum. Second place, a 336.15. French Brigade. Oh. Yeah, I was looking. <laughs> um, 
See the return of Scion, though. Yeah, That's Sane's better. back. Thanks happy back. to have him back. Absolutely. Happy He's gotten good times in um, ECSS, Manipulous, and Glitchless already. So, picking up effectively where he left off, which is being great at runs. Eggs, I'd yep. love to see. Absolutely. But yeah, second place this is, Oh, sorry. This is a really good time at 344. Yeah, it's... Uh, 1 minute 35 seconds of your time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we have second for Saiyan. Uh, fifth for Alwo, a 345.59, 11th for Paris 10, 338.15, 14th for Galino, a 350.31, 18th for Warax, with a 352.57, and then 20th for Dath. Or Dath. Uh, I want to mention that Alwo got his 345.59. He got a 345 because he crit Venusaur at the end. <laughs> nice. And um, he had the best time up to Magikarp with a 110.47. It was oh, some of the craziest... It was one of the craziest runs I've ever seen up to Karp. Fair play. <laughs> uh, Manipulus any percent in Elbow still though with their uh, 8th place, 217.26. There's Billy. Not bad. Bent as well the 40120 world record in that. He actually got a um sub four today. It's finally sub four for Billy. Congrats Made to Rubentis and Billy. Oh, people been picking up Battle Factory again. All 50 silver. Worst with the world record, 4107. Jimmy in second with a 4138, and then Tucker. 4538 in fifth. Is it is actually last place. <laughs> is that last place? Yeah. It's still fairly close though. <laughs> yeah. Too bad. Worcester grinded level fifty factory um before he before he left for uh Cindy and Melbourne. Yeah, he didn't get gold print sedge. But this guy right here, Massofactorist, not even a speedrunner, I'd say, but like he grinded um Battle Factory level fifty for the gold for like eight months, it looks like, from his YouTube. Oh, wow. So this is a really big achievement for him. The first level 50 gold print run. And uh, it's a huge accomplishment. Congrats to him. 490 hours of attempts. Airplay. And around 300 of them were streamed. Um. I can play some book catching contest. Um, it's uh, for Chip Idiot. 49.20. I was going to make a dumb comment about how book catching is a much di like different pace of battle but I have no idea about the book catching run. It could be very high intensity for all I know. Nah, it's oh. <laughs> it's played as a pretty chill category. But, um, yeah, it's book catching is not that serious. Sorry, but, uh... Eagles Blitz. Alright. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Battle, uh, Battle on Pass to Red. Uh, first place, world record for Worcester. Uh, 5.19.13. And then second for JT Magic Man. A uh, 6.34.08. There's the Sork run that was mentioned a while ago, back when we were talking about Diamond Pearl. Uh, world record I'm for pardon. Dexy. 3.17.40. Um, we can ignore the Candy Falls runs now. Nah. Uh, actually, we kind of can because I think we mentioned. I think I mentioned all. The, at least mentioned Yuki's um, eighth place for headball though for four eleven fifty six, uh, and the thirteenth for Morgrim a four fourteen flat. Uh, all root excadrill. That's actually that's interesting. yeah. It's interesting in the sense because that's on sword. Yeah, um, so this was using yeah. a Drillber from a Max Raid Den, I want to say, after Milo. Yeah, yep, that's right. Yep. Yeah, so this is a completely different run than the, the like, shield best times right now. Um, and I think, I want to say Headbob finished a couple of runs, um, but is going to leave it here, I want to say. Just based on what he what they mentioned in uh like the PB and Clips channel. Yeah, he 
doesn't think it's like that viable. I think like during this run, he was like, he realized something about the routing and like how he can get brick break, even though he didn't use it. But um, wow. yeah, improvable for sure is his description. That's exactly what he feels. But I think he's content with not playing this. It was just a fun idea. Yeah. Um, and then various alt mains and trade alt mains. Um, a lot of trade alt mains, just in general, actually. That's a, that's a fair amount. Um, any of, the, any of these <laughs> new? That's that's the question. Bump is not new. Gothic Tell? Gothic Tell's new. The four twenty two eleven. Is, Ch is Charizard new? I don't know if anyone has done Charizard before, actually. Either way, there's a fair amount. Um, but then, yeah, then there's the Tower of Two for Session Iron with the new world record, the 124.20 for the English side of uh, Get Get Shifu. How was your run? It was, it was okay. Um, I was... Spider and I were kind of both trying to do this at the same time, and uh, I ended up getting the the large candy. I actually checked a bunch of extra spots in the Crown Tundra and got a bunch of extra candies. There's another way you can get large candies by getting a Dynite Ore, which is a 10% drop in a couple spots, and then trading it in the max layer, but that's pretty slow. So I checked those spots as well. So there's a bunch of random items I picked up, but I ended up getting a good Sobble and a good uh, good Kubfu with the high levels and... Uh, didn't uh had pretty decent luck on all the fights so definitely improvable though good to hear you always like to hear that there is still room just for making it a bit more interesting for people but then also spider third uh 12709 how was your run uh it was pretty good so this one was blissyless but not moto stoke skip um right. so a few weeks ago um so yeah definitely already outdated but it was a pretty good run Fair play. Um, yeah, that was that was the new revolutionary time save for improvement, and then <laughs> and then we we found more stuff. So that's pretty funny. We briefly showed Poke Hot Yans run earlier, but just to show it here, just mention it again because I don't think we actually mentioned it at the time. I think did we? It was a one twenty three eighteen. That's the Japanese world record yeah. now. Iron with the Tower of Two Face English Don't Get Ashfu World Record, a 111.20. How was the run? <laughs> I was very good. I. Yeah, I got the got the medium candy. The second candy is a 59%, as Spider mentioned. So I got that, and then the Sobble was, was decent. And uh, yeah, just had pretty good luck throughout again. Uh, nothing much really went wrong. Uh, my options were horrendous. That was probably the worst part. The thing I hate the least, or like the least about that run. I'm very bad at options at the start of the run, but yeah, they, they um, can be a pain. Yeah, this leaderboard's actually very interesting. So we have um, obviously like almost a brand new top five uh, runs here. I got um, a, We had my first run of it this morning. I got a one twelve thirty four. So yeah, fully new top five. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, Amber and Spider both did with Sobble as well as myself. Um, Yoshida did his did theirs with Starmie, I believe. Well, I could be wrong. The stars uh, would suggest stars. I think yeah. Either that or Aspect it would be no, it might be Kadabra actually. Aspects is with Kadabra, for sure. Um, you can check Yoshida's. I'm pretty That's sure. That's Starmie. <laughs> yeah, it's with Starmie. Yeah. All right. And then Morgrim at the seventh place did theirs with Noctowl with that Hoot Hoot uh, Max Raid Pokemon, which is pretty insane. And then yeah. Greta did hers with Starmie as well. <laughs> so a nice diverse uh, list here. Indeed. And then for the Japanese side, don't get a few. Ringo with the world record, the 109.29. 
Poki Hotyan in second with a 111.47, and then Yoshida Shu in third with a 113.15. I know Ringo was with Sobble, but I don't know about the other two on that one. Lots of alt mains here. No, well. lo lots of alt mains. Um, I mentioned all of these already again. Quite a lot of yep. Stami, though. Stami, I guess... Is is it Stami and... I guess Kadabra probably the... Oh, well, Stami's definitely the most favourite, it seems like. Yeah, they're, those two are the two fastest other than Drizzile. Uh, uh, Kadabra technically... Well, Kadabra was the fastest, but then Shua did that crazy like catch with Yawn and everything. And so now Stami's on top there. Because you can skip... Um, going to the Crown Tundra altogether on that route, but it's extremely risky because of the catch. Yeah, that's fair. So that's, uh, that's, that's a nice one. It was Shua, it was Yoshida Shu? I'm not sure. Might be. Uh, yes. The answer is yes. They're, yeah. They have the same person. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was confused there. I was like, wait a second, who's that? I think... <laughs> yeah, no, that... If I can... Yeah, so Yoshida Shu is... So, a bit of behind the scenes for how the uh, leaderboard roundup works. There's a file that all the names get put into. Um, like, like oh, a okay. JSON file. But it doesn't update with the new names. It just will check for the code. Like there's like a assigned number or something that it looks for. And then it takes that and grabs the name from that's appropriate. Oh, something along the lines, but basically it looks for something else that's not the name, but then gets grabs the name from the within that section mm -hmm. and puts it there. So I, basically, I just need to update it. Um, there's probably quite a few people that are, are like that. Uh, it, it's the same thing as one of the PSR ranking. I think it's actually the exact same file, but two different locations. Anyway, though. Um, Third place for Zypotic in Get to Calyrex on English, a 119.16. And real quick on that one, that one also has new time saved this month. Uh, oh, because yeah. Amber informed me that you can lose to Hop 2. Uh, yeah. And that saves 30 seconds over my PB. So <laughs> that one also can go down a decent bit. So Just is get it... lucky on the slowpoke catch. <laughs> yeah, because on, on my PB, I already was YOLOing slowpoke. Uh, I got a third ball. Uh, so, oh, you were under level for that one too. Yeah, yeah. Oh um, wow. So, so skipping slowpoke is just straight, or uh, losing the hop too is just straight up time save. Uh, is it Grookey? I assume. Yeah, that, Grookey. That would make yep. more sense. Yeah. Yeah, you just uh, taunt the Wulu. Yeah. Um. Dynamax Adventure one player. Uh world record for Zypotic, a 419. Uh do, do, do. and then Dex entry. But it doesn't say what the entry is, so. Hmm. It's Glaceon again. I think all three of the ones on the board are right. Glaceon. Glaceon, fair enough. Um but yeah, Poke Hot Yan with that world record, a 4639. And not to click on the part of the side to make it go up there. Um Few alt routes for BDSP. Nice to see. Uh, Say you uh, color with uh, the Japanese Crobat route, an English Scyther route, and oh, that would be English Scyther route, and then the Japanese Scyther routes Ino Ino and Yoshida Shu doing their runs there. Uh, world record for Harry on Boss Rush, a 10.50. Uh, Ryzuk in second for Beat Cleaver at 55.33. And then Co op Catch Them All 2 decks, I believe. Yep, that is the that IRL Co op Catch Them All. Yep. 858.31. Uh, Pokemon Battle Revolution, category extension is 2 pass, Cindy plus Tommy. Um, world record for RDA, a 416.21. And then for Stargazer round two transfers, uh, world record for Peas with a 138.38. Uh, and then 
last couple of runs. Snap Calgary extensions, 300,000 points uh, on the N64 for Akafuku. Uh, a 138, 8, uh, 138.58. And then Alt Mains, Vaporeon, Ampharos on XC. Bodo with a world record of 507.37. And that's the leaderboard roundup. Hello, Amoeba. How are you? <sighs> Sorry, I had to stretch. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a long lead of all around, though. I needed to stretch. Of uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, the next podcast, as of right now, uh, learned last week things can change. Um, but yeah, so next podcast, as of now, will be on the 5th of November. Four weeks. Four weeks? That actually works out well, potentially. Or it'll yeah. end up being five weeks. <laughs> uh, if we need to delay a week. Uh, Ekman, Biden, thank you for joining the podcast this month. Thanks for having me. Yeah, same. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, uh, follow them. Links are in chat. Uh, also, feel free to follow, follow us hosts, Etiquette, Iron, Okay, and myself. Also, thank you for joining as well. I think this this is the first time it's been all four of us. I think so, because I've missed the last two. Yeah. When was the last time we were actually, like, before Sophie joined? When was actually the last time we were all on as well? Because it has been a bit. I think it was... When the score one was right a host, after... I think, right at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well no, yeah, I mean, the, the last time where, like, me, like, myself, yourself, I, and Etiquette... We're on. Yeah, the the three of us were on the week after SGDQ, and then I haven't been on since. Basically, that has been a while. Yeah, but that does not matter. We are all here now. Um, <laughs> and but yeah, uh, don't click on that. Uh, any any last words other than etiquette hacking? I think we're done. I think we're done. No. Nope. All right. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Have a good rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. Stay safe. Take care.